Uncle Mark here working on a 2012, I believe, Ford Fiesta. Trying to figure out how I'm going to make uh, this new key fob work with the old one since the key is not cut and I don't want to pay for programming. This actually belongs to a friend of ours and she needs two keys. And as we mentioned, she was quoted about 700 bucks Canadian to do it. So I'm hoping to Frankenstein the two together and hopefully it'll work. So the first thing I got to do is take it apart uh, she's got a key ring on here, so take that out and uh, separate these two. So I got my screwdriver here, and I'm just going to try and turn it one way or the other, and it should do that. I'm going to show how to program it as well. There's going to be a little bit of programming. I'm just trying to turn this clockwise or whatever. And this cheap screwdriver I have, I should have thrown it out a long time ago. The handle's spinning, so it's not turning the screwdriver part. Uh, but I like the size of this thing. Maybe I should try and hammer it down a little more, it'll work. And I'm going to pry these two apart and should be able to get at all the electronics in here. There's a battery in here. That's probably a good idea to maybe change the battery while you're in here too. So that's the old one. Set it aside, don't want to mix them up. This is the new one. We're going to do the same thing. Now there's a couple different programming things this needs. The key itself gets programmed and then the functions on the remote. So what I thought I'd do is, this is the new one, take it apart. Easier said than done. It should come apart on the other side as well. There's the circuit board and the battery. Give this little prize well, there we go. And this little piece here is actually the pellet that lets the car know that it is the right key. So I'm going to set that aside. All I want is basically these couple pieces. I'm going to do this same thing to the original key. Split it apart. And once I get it apart, it's very important we don't mix the two up. Which I did before when I was looking at this. but. So the bottom piece with the battery we're going to keep, and I just, I don't know why I want to look at this other stuff here. I thought maybe we could use the original buttons, but not going to worry about it. So hopefully this makes sense so far. The battery, as you see there, is the old part of the key. This electronic part is the new part. The reason I'm um, using the old part with the batteries, because again, remember that little pellet? is in there that tells the car this is the correct key you can start. So I've used the circuit board from the new key and I've used the top button part from the new key. Just got to set that in there properly. I'm trying to look through uh, viewfinder and that makes it a little tougher too. Line that all up. Wait to see how much money we're going to save and how easy this was to do. Get that to click back together, and this one just happens to be roughly the same size as the factory. I was worried it wouldn't be, but it does click in there, and it stays. So as you see, we've got new buttons. The old one there, I'm just going to save for something. I don't know what I'm going to do with that. And I still, we still have the old key part. So it'll turn in the ignition. For some reason, I'm still fascinated with what's the old parts in here. So maybe we could use them for something as well, but or use the old the factory Ford buttons, but it looks like it's a little different design, so set it aside. Anyway, here we are. So the actual cutout key part should work. What I've got here is if you're ever testing one of these, I'll link this tester in the description. If you want to know if the, the buttons actually are sending a uh, signal, this is what this is, a signal catcher tester. Press the button, so it's 315 megahertz. That's for the U.S. Canadian side, 315. And this bottom one too, they'll all say the same, but at least when you press them, you see it is sending a signal. Because the dealer said they didn't know if it was the key or if it was the receiver in the car. It's like, what are you telling me? And that pellet's in that side there, so. Easy enough. <clears throat> we know the buttons all put out a signal, just the car won't understand what the signal is. It's a handy little thing. <clears throat> I'll put a link in the description. It was not too much money. I've had a lot of people ask, well, how do you know if I put a new battery in there, what does it need? Well, you don't know. Does this fob work or not? This little gadget will help you. Good to have. They're really cheap. I'm just going to put the ring back on this key. 
Let's program those key functions on the remote. This would be a good time too, if you don't mind. Can you give me the thumbs up if you're finding some value to this video? Once we get this thing all running, I think you're going to be pretty pleased that you spent a couple minutes and watched this. So once this key rings back on, let's get to the actual programming of this fob. You're following me so far? Okay. I'm going to do both keys, so if you didn't catch it the first time, you'll see the second time. So I stick the key in, and then turn it to on four times. One, two, three, four. It should ding. Then you can pull it out, and you can press any button, and that should program it. And you should be able to see if it works or not. You don't want to go to start, obviously. You just want to go to on. And we try it. You should hear some doors opening or closing, locking. This car, for some reason, doesn't show. It doesn't have a little way to unlock it or lock it in the car that I can see. It is working. We can go around to the trunk. Try that out as well. And looks like, looks like it worked. So let's go back to uh, what we need to do. So stick it in. One, two, three, four. That's what you got to do. No beep. Hmm. Is your foot on the brake? Is your door opened? This won't work with the door open. I noticed. So let's close the door. Start all over again. One, two, three, four. And then uh, pull it out. And press one button on there just once. Mm -hmm. Now, there's more fobs for this car than uh, just the one I found out. And every time you do this little programming, it kicks you out. So I have all the keys ready, even other working keys. As the original program is going to be deleted. So insert one of the keys, but have the rest of them sitting right beside you. You need all the fobs there. Turn the key to run, but not start. Do that back and forth, you know, off and on, four times. You gotta do that within six seconds. You should have heard the chime. Pull the key out, then press the button, any button, just one button on that one. Then put that fob down, grab the next one, press any one button, good. Put it down, do that again to every one of them that you have. And then once you're done, you don't have to do anything. The programming will end itself. Then you'll want to check to make sure again that uh, every one of them works. If not, you're going to have to stick one key in again, turn it on and off four times. If you hear that programming ding, then take the key out, press one fob, grab another one, press one of the buttons on the fob, stop, do it again, that'll work.